Hello. Welcome to Today in History, an AI podcast. I'm Steven. And I'm Ruth. We're the artificial intelligence hosts of this show. Every day, we'll tell you about the most interesting, consequential and sometimes forgotten facts in history that happened on this date. Politics, economy, war, religion, culture. One topic every day. Plus something that you would have heard on the news back then on this date. Also, about a holiday somewhere in the world, someone who was born and someone who died. Hope you stay with us. Please enjoy a few minutes to maybe get a little smarter and appreciate the enormity of every single day. Today is Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024. The year is 1721. Our main topic, Robert Walpole, pictured, took office as first Lord of the Treasury, Chancellor of the Exchequer and Leader of the House of Commons, becoming the first de facto Prime Minister of Great Britain. On this day in 1721, Robert Walpole, first Earl of Orford, took office as first Lord of the Treasury, Chancellor of the Exchequer, and Leader of the House of Commons, becoming the first de facto Prime Minister of Great Britain. This event marked a significant milestone in the history of the United Kingdom, as it established the role of the Prime Minister, which has since become a cornerstone of the country's political system. Context, at the time, the United Kingdom was still in its early stages of development, with the acts of union between England and Scotland in 1707 having created a unified state. However, the government was still in its infancy, and there was a need for a strong leader to guide the country forward. This was where Robert Walpole came in. Historical significance, Walpole's appointment as First Lord of the Treasury, Chancellor of the Exchequer, and Leader of the House of Commons was significant for several reasons. Firstly, it marked the beginning of a new era in British politics, with the Prime Minister becoming the head of government and the leader of the cabinet. This was a departure from the previous system, where the monarch held significant power and influence. Secondly, Walpole's appointment signaled a shift towards a more modern and efficient form of government. He was known for his administrative skills and his ability to manage the political and economic affairs of the country. He also played a key role in stabilizing the economy and reducing the national debt. Lastly, Walpole's tenure as prime minister set a precedent for future leaders. He served for 21 years, which was a significant achievement at the time. His leadership style and approach to governance became a model for future prime ministers, and his legacy continues to be felt in the British political system to this day. In conclusion, the appointment of Robert Walpole as First Lord of the Treasury, Chancellor of the Exchequer, and Leader of the House of Commons was a significant event in British history. It marked the beginning of a new era in governance and established the role of the Prime Minister, which has since become an integral part of the country's political system. Walpole's leadership and legacy continue to be remembered and celebrated to this day. The year is 1888. On the news, Jack the Ripper, the first of 11 unsolved brutal murders of women committed in or near the impoverished Whitechapel district in the East End of London, occurs. Good evening, and welcome to our evening news broadcast. I am your anchor, and we have some disturbing news to share with you tonight. It is with a heavy heart that we must inform you of a brutal murder that has taken place in the East End of London. The victim, a woman, was found dead in the Whitechapel district, which is known to be an impoverished area. This heinous crime has sent shockwaves throughout the community, and we can confirm that it is the first of 11 such murders that have taken place in this area. The identity of the killer remains unknown, and the police are working tirelessly to apprehend the perpetrator. The community is on high alert, and residents are being advised to remain vigilant. The police have launched an investigation, and we will keep you updated on any developments as they become available. This event is particularly disturbing because of the brutality of the crime, and the fact that it has occurred in a vulnerable area of London. The East End has a rich history, and it is known for its cultural diversity and vibrancy. However, it is also an area that has faced significant challenges, including poverty and social inequality. We want to assure our viewers that the authorities are taking this matter very seriously, and they are doing everything in their power to ensure the safety of the community. We urge anyone with information to come forward and assist the police in their investigation. We will continue to monitor this situation closely, and we will provide updates as more information becomes available. Thank you for watching, and we now return you to our regular programming. 
Our selected holiday for today, Christian Feast Day, April 3rd, Eastern Orthodox Liturgics. On April 3rd, the Eastern Orthodox Church celebrates a significant feast day in honor of St. Mary of Egypt. This holiday commemorates the life and teachings of St. Mary, a prominent figure in Eastern Orthodox Christianity. Cultural significance, St. Mary of Egypt is revered for her devotion to God and her commitment to a life of prayer and asceticism. According to tradition, St. Mary lived a life of sin and prostitution before experiencing a profound conversion and devoting herself to a life of spiritual discipline. Her story serves as a powerful reminder of the transformative power of faith and the possibility of redemption and forgiveness. The feast day of St. Mary of Egypt is celebrated with great enthusiasm and reverence by Eastern Orthodox Christians around the world. On this day, believers attend church services, participate in processions, and engage in acts of charity and community service. The holiday serves as an opportunity for individuals to reflect on their own spiritual journeys and to seek guidance and inspiration from the life and teachings of St. Mary. The cultural significance of this holiday extends beyond the religious realm, as it also highlights the importance of women in Eastern Orthodox Christian tradition. St. Mary of Egypt is one of the most revered female saints in the Eastern Orthodox Church, and her story serves as a powerful reminder of the critical role that women have played in shaping the spiritual and cultural heritage of Eastern Orthodox Christianity. In conclusion, the feast day of St. Mary of Egypt is a significant holiday in the Eastern Orthodox liturgical calendar, celebrated with great enthusiasm and reverence by believers around the world. This holiday serves as a powerful reminder of the transformative power of faith, the possibility of redemption and forgiveness, and the critical role that women have played in shaping the spiritual and cultural heritage of Eastern Orthodox Christianity. On this day, in 1939, François de Roubaix, French composer, d. 1975, was born. François de Roubaix was a French composer who left an indelible mark on the world of film music. Born in 1939, he began his career in the 1960s and quickly established himself as a rising star in the industry. Over the course of a decade, he created a unique musical style that captivated audiences and inspired a generation of composers. De Roubaix's compositions were characterized by their innovative use of new sounds and techniques. He was known for experimenting with different instruments and electronic elements, creating a distinctive sound that was both avant-garde and accessible. His scores were often described as haunting and atmospheric, perfectly capturing the mood and tone of the films he worked on. Some of de Roubaix's most notable works include the scores for the films L'Enfer and Le Ten M. So. His music for L'Enfer was particularly groundbreaking, featuring a blend of traditional orchestral elements and electronic experimentation that was ahead of its time. The score for Le Ten M. So was equally impressive, with de Roubaix using a combination of classical instruments and avant-garde techniques to create a sense of tension and unease that perfectly complemented the film's themes. De Roubaix's contributions to the world of film music were not limited to his work as a composer. He was also a skilled conductor and orchestrator, working closely with directors and producers to bring their vision to life. His passion for film and music was evident in everything he did, and his dedication to his craft was an inspiration to those who worked with him. Sadly, de Roubaix's life was cut tragically short. He died in 1975, at the age of 36, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire and influence composers to this day. Despite his untimely death, de Roubaix's music lives on, a testament to his talent and dedication. His contributions to the world of film music are still celebrated and studied by fans and scholars alike, and his work remains an important part of the history of cinema. We remember the life of Sarah Brady, American activist and author, born 1942, who died on this date in 2015. Sarah Brady was an American activist and author, best known for her tireless efforts to promote gun control in the United States. Born in 1942, Brady dedicated her life to advocating for stricter gun laws and regulations, following a personal tragedy that forever changed her life. In 1981, Brady's husband, James Brady, was shot during an assassination attempt on President Ronald Reagan. James survived the attack but was left permanently disabled, confined to a wheelchair and requiring constant care. This life-altering event sparked Sarah's passion for gun control, and she became a powerful voice for change. Brady's activism led to the establishment of the Brady Campaign to Prevent Gun Violence, an organization dedicated to promoting gun safety and reducing gun violence in America. 
Through her work with the Brady campaign, Brady fought tirelessly for stricter gun laws, including background checks and waiting periods, as well as bans on certain types of firearms and accessories. In addition to her advocacy work, Brady was also an accomplished author. She wrote several books, including A Good Fight, The Story of the Brady Campaign to Prevent Gun Violence and Target, A Mother's Story of Love, Loss, and Advocacy. These works provided a personal and powerful perspective on the impact of gun violence and the importance of gun control. Throughout her life, Brady received numerous awards and accolades for her work, including the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the nation's highest civilian honor. Her dedication to gun control and her unwavering commitment to making America safer earned her the respect and admiration of people from all walks of life. Sarah Brady's legacy continues to inspire and motivate people today. Her tireless efforts to promote gun control and prevent gun violence serve as a powerful reminder of the importance of standing up for what we believe in and fighting for positive change. Though she may no longer be with us, her impact on American society and her unwavering commitment to a safer, more peaceful world will never be forgotten. This was Today in History, an AI podcast. Brought to you by Decor Studios. All content was sourced from Wikipedia and processed with open source large language models. This podcast is released under Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 4.0 International License. Thank you so much for listening. Talk to you tomorrow.